While X Sabres continued to dominate the format, there was one deck in particular that was looking to leap ahead of the competition. Under constant iteration over the past several months, the time had finally come for Frog FDK to fling its way to the top of competitive play. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because as anything is possible, welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Yeah! Well folks, we made it. Here it is, Frog FTK, one of the largest embarrassments in Konami's history. Now, the Shining Darkness contained a lot of really powerful cards for a lot of really powerful decks, but one card that no one expected to break the game in the way that it did was Ronin Toten. Ronin Toten and Substitoad created a loop that unfortunately led to this, one of the most powerful first turn kill decks in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Now this wasn't discovered at the start of the format, as you can see by looking on things like Yu-Gi-Oh top decks, for the majority of the format, X Saber was still the best deck by a country mile, but people started figuring out frogs very quickly as the world championship edged ever closer. And eventually Galileo ended up winning that tournament with this strategy. Now I would really recommend as a prerequisite to watching this that you check out Joe Giorlando's Yu-Gi-Oh! History video about Frog FTK because it does a great job of explaining this deck is not only the most capable and powerful combo deck in the format, it is also the best control deck. As people started knowing that Frog FTK was likely going to show up at their event, they started boarding cards like this one, Hanawata, which prevents you from taking effect damage over the course of the turn, and quick play spell and trap removal to beat cards like Mass Driver. As a result, the frogs did what they have done best in the last couple of formats since, and done a fantastic impression of a control deck. After game one, Frequently, you would board out of mass drivers and end on a board of something like uh, Substitoad, Dupe Frog, Flip Flop Frog, and a couple of Unifrogs. Uh, this would ensure that you have the ability to, using Flip Flop Frog, bounce all your opponent's monsters back to their hand, clear their back row with Unifrog, and your opponent couldn't really attack even if you weren't able to assemble the classic Dupe Lock because Dupe Frog necessitates being attacked, but Substitoad prevents Dupe Frog from being destroyed by battle. It was a really, really frustrating way to lose games, and it happened constantly. Um, as a result, players would overboard in order to not lose to Mass Driver, just to find themselves woefully unprepared for a control game two and three. This deck has a ton of play to it, but I'll just give you the nitty gritty before we get into the games. What you need to know is that Substitoad is not a once per turn. It allows you to attribute a monster to a special summon a frog monster from your deck, except Frog the Jam. You can go through every frog in your deck in the first turn, and then send a couple of swap frogs over the course of the chain in order to send Ronin Toten to the graveyard. That Ronin Toten represents another boss which you can then tribute for Substitoad and ensure that your entire field is full of froggies. This can be used to assemble the dupe lock, it can be used uh, to assemble a control board, but most of the time it was being used to facilitate a mass driver setup in which you would tribute a monster on your side of the field to do 400 to your opponent. This meant that you would be doing 8,000 points to their life points by sending 20 monsters, usually the same Ronin Toten over and over and over again. Now if you didn't find the mass driver, you are pretty happy about it. <laughs> this was a card that would potentially brick your opening hand, you want to see a way to get the Substitoad and not a lot else. At the end of your combo, when all of your frogs are out of the deck, you still have access to Poison Draw Frog, which allows you to draw individual cards if it is sent to the graveyard. Now this is a when you can effect and therefore can miss timing, but if you send this card from the field to the graveyard using the effect of Swap Frog, then it doesn't. And as a result, at the end of your combo, you can draw three cards off the top of your deck, most of which are going to be either Hand Destructions, Mass Drivers, Moray of Greeds, or Salvages. Cards you may recognize as always to get to this card right here. In fact, it is very, very difficult after you've established the Substitoad combo 
to fail to go off. I, I would argue that it happens so infrequently that the possibility is remote enough you really don't have to think about it. And then I will eat those words when we don't do so. I want to talk about some of the uh, little interesting choices in this deck real quickly. Firstly, um, a copy of Fishborg Blaster is in here to facilitate OTKs. Yes, this deck is really, really powerful in terms of FTKing, but it's also pretty good in terms of synchro summoning. As long as you have one tuner in rotation via Fishborg Blaster, you could very easily go for the Armory Arm Colossal Fighter combo that many decks used to scum games during this format. Moreover, you can use two Armory Arms, because you're so adept at synchro summoning, to OTK into something like a gadget. <laughs> Your opponent doesn't even need to control a monster with 2900 attack for you to be able to lethal them that way. Out of the board, it is also playing a quick draw synchron package to diversify the mechanisms by which you can actually win the game. If your opponent knows you are on a very linear deck, they can board very easily. Throwing into quick draw synchron means that sometimes you get to win the game by going into junk destroyer or something, and that's pretty good on its own as well. So with all of that out of the way, I'm going to take this deck, which has been synthesized from the world's championship list and the analysis given by Joji Orlando in his Yu-Gi-Oh! History series. We're going to give it a shot and hope that we open the combo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we find ourselves at the end of another era in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. This is probably the last time Joseph and I are going to touch X-Sabers in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! There is a few opportunities for the deck to barely break into top 16 around 2011, but there's a lot of other fun decks that Joseph and I want to show off, and honestly, they don't look too different from what you're seeing before you. This is probably one of the most optimized, streamlined versions of the deck imaginable, and you've seen some of the evolutions of the deck, but the deck also loses some components as well. Courtesy of the September 2010 ban list, which will be in effect as of the next episode, Rescue Cat actually gets banned, and that's a pretty significant hit for the deck. Not the end-all be-all, but it loses one of its strongest power pushes, and so we're going to be taking this deck up one more time against one of the most feared decks of the format, one of the most consistent FTKs ever conceived, Frog FTK. So let's go ahead and do the card by card very quickly, because you guys are probably pretty familiar with the deck by now. Uh, we do have a DD Crow. This could maybe potentially save us from actually getting FTK'd. I highly Highly doubt it, but at least we have some contingency plan if we lose the die roll. We've got a Gores, we've got the Rescue Cat, Sangen, Summoner Monk to go into the Rescue Cat and probably just kill Joseph immediately. If Joseph can't kill us, we do have opportunities to maybe kill him on the crackback, but again, that's very, very optimistic. We'll have to see if that happens. We've got a Thunder King Ryo, triple X Saber Air Bellum for ripping cards out of his hand. This could maybe also help us out a bit. We have an X Saber Pashul, we've got two Bogart Knight, three Dark Soul, one Emmer's Blade, three Fall Troll, and one copy of Full Helm Knight for the spells. Double Book of Moon, Brain Control, Cold Wave, Giant Trunade, Double Gold Sarcophagus, like this, because we really just want to see Rescue Cat as fast as possible, Heavy Storm, Mind Control, and Mystical Space Typhoon, and then the traps, Double Bottomless Trap Hole, Double Gotham's Emergency Call, A Royal Oppression, Solemn Judgment, Starlight Road, Torrential Tribute, Trap Dust Shoot, and Trap Stun. I like the 20-10-10 ratio of this deck. You don't really see decks that are like this sort of golden ratio of Yu-Gi-Oh! too often anymore, but there's something just very aesthetically pleasing about it. And for those of you wondering, this was the first place deck list from the 2010 national championship that took place in North America. And so you could imagine that this deck is pretty good. Let's go ahead and move on to the extra deck. Uh, I think at this point, we've seen most of these cards that are in here. I don't think there's anything too new. I guess X Saber Wayne is kind of new, but aside from that, everything else in here is pretty standard thus far. And then for the side deck, this is actually going to matter immensely going up against Joseph. We've got two Consecrated Light, a Cyber Dragon, another DD Crow. This is 100% coming in and two copies of Hot Hanewada, uh, this is a contingency against Frog FTK specifically. As a quick effect, you can discard this card, you take no effect damage this turn, which means we don't die to Mass Driver, and then we have an opportunity to potentially actually blow up Joseph's board to be able to actually mount some sort of comeback. So we're really hoping to see this. Kind of shocked that they weren't just maining triple of this with Frog FTK running around, but you know, old Yu-Gi-Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a Thunder King Ryo for the spells, we have a Saber Slash, and then the traps crevice into the different dimension. This this is also probably going to come in just so we have ways to actually get some of the frogs out of Joseph's graveyard. We've got Double Dust Tornado, a Light Imprisoning Mirror, and two copies of Pulling the Rug. Guys, I can't wait to see how this is going to play out. I think there is actually an opportunity for us to win this, but it's going to rely on a few things. A, we need to win the die roll going first. That's 
100%. Like, that just needs to happen. And B, if we can potentially stop Joseph from FTKing, or if we can have him brick and get, like, rescue cat combo, then we may actually be able to take the set. We're gonna have to see. It'll be interesting. But, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not gonna make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. You know, Joseph, uh don't know exactly what I was thinking when I voluntarily decided to let you play an FDK this episode, I'm going to be honest. Right, did, you, did you see the last episode of Jank? I, I think that uh, we've already seen this one play out. Um, That's true. Although chronologically, I don't know which one of these is actually going out first. But, uh, you know, if you haven't already watched History of Jank, there's an excuse now because there's going to be a few other FDKs you might want to, uh, you know, take your attention towards. Oh, you but don't want to miss them. This will be interesting. This will be interesting for sure. Yeah, this will be interesting. Uh, I know yeah. that Frog FDK is widely known as one of the most consistent and powerful FDKs probably in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, period. Uh, that said... It's not like X Saber is a bad deck. Um, no. All of the discussion of Frog FTK that I read um, was very specific about uh, post board. It was difficult to kind of get the FTK off. So we will see uh, what happens. We will see um, if you win the die roll. Very important. And uh, I guess we will. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see the outcome. Yeah, that's always one of the biggest issues with playing FTKs in general, right? Usually game one is heavily in your favor, but then the sideboard comes in and it changes things quite a right. bit. So we'll have to see how it plays out, buddy. Uh, I got a new randomization method for us just for this episode. So instead of rock, paper, scissors, instead of picking a number, we're going to do a classic and just toss a coin, buddy. So we're going to toss, uh, and I, I, I gave it in your favor as well. We're going to be tossing a quarter from your favorite city or state, rather, uh, New Jersey. Oh, so God. heads or tails, buddy. What do you, you think? Telling what do you me think? I'm going <laughs> to lose this to my two least favorite things, coin flips and New Jersey Gatling Dragon and the Garden State Parkway about to collude to lose me a 100% FTK rate. Oh my god. Okay, um, it's a state quarter. It is a state so quarter. So New Jersey's correct. on the back. All right, in that case, give me heads. Gonna go heads. I think you're turning your, uh, your face away from New Jersey. Makes sense. And it's heads, uh, buddy. Congratulations. Uh, good episode. This was fun. Uh, we got to shout out the patrons. Yep. Uh, shout out. No, I'm just kidding. We do have to shout out a patron, though, at the beginning of every, every episode, like we always do. Thank you to Brock Gordon. Buddy, uh, can't wait to see how this is going to go. I really hope you brick and good luck. So uh, it's not like you always draw the combo. And the combo in this deck is it's sort of convoluted. Uh, there's a couple of things that get you there, but the cornerstone of it is uh, substitute. And if I don't find one, then I'm screwed. Hmm. Okay, so uh, draw phase, I'm going to fire off a hand destruction. Well, don't forget to draw your card for turn, sir. And uh, does that change anything, or are we still hand destruction? I'm still firing the hand destruction. There's a tree board frog in this Okay, hand. so that that could be a good sign. Maybe he doesn't have the substitute yet. Uh, I would hope that's the case. Okay, okay. so you got rid of these two. Uh, everything you get's rid of, like, irrelevant. I'm trying to think of, if I do have a shot in this game, what is going to save me? I think bottomless is probably pretty bad in this match. It's not great. It's not great. <laughs> and uh, the way my hand currently sits, I don't like that. I actually think Gold Sark is too slow for this matchup, so I'm actually going to pitch that as well. All right. And we'll draw All two. All right, let's do it again. Uh, I'm going to send Fishborg, Blaster, and Ronin Toten. Okay. Uh, if anything, we're prolonging the episode for the ad revenue, so that's you know, could be worse. Uh, I suppose we'll get rid of... Jeez, I kind of want to keep that, actually. Sangan? I feel like this card's actually not... It's not great, either. I want these other two, though, if I draw something else. Let's see. I, I suppose I'm actually going to get rid of this Torrential Tribute. We'll draw two more. All right. Uh, we'll go to standby. I will bring back the treeborn. Sure. And then we'll go to main one. All, All right, good. Card destruction. Gross. All right. So none of this mattered in the Correct. first place. There goes my rescue Sick. cat. Heads up of you doing all that in the uh, draw phase so you can get your tree born yep. back. One of the very important things in this deck is you cannot just blindly go to main one because uh, oftentimes this is what you're doing. And uh, oftentimes this is what you're following it up. Great. Well, okay. So we have the combo, but we also need the mass driver. Uh, we're still missing that piece of the puzzle we here. We are. Okay, uh, we're going to go substitute here. We are going to... I imagine we're just going to run the gamut here. Uh, so it's a little more involved than you would expect. And it's complicated by the fact that I don't have the mass driver. 
Uh, now, in all of the videos that I watched about this, uh, they were actually talking about you should celebrate if you don't find the Mass Driver in your opening hand. It's terrible. Uh, it bricks you to no end, and given how close I was to just not seeing the combo at all, I am inclined to think that that is the case. And it's so hard to miss getting it by the end of the combo. Uh, so we are going to try to not miss getting it. It's a little complicated by the fact that one way in which you can refill your hand is using these poison draw frogs. But at the moment, we had to send two of them to the graveyard in order to perform the combo in the first place. Uh, so we're going to banish the Unifrog. We'll bring back the Ronin Toten. No sure. ones per turn on this card, so we'll fire off the Substitute again. Yep. Uh, we are going to go for a Swap Frog here. Uh, we're going to use the Swap Frog to send a Ronin Toten to the graveyard. And uh, then from this position, we have some decisions to make. Uh, we're going to banish uh, for Ronin Toten again, this time banishing a Death Frog. Sounds good. We'll go good. for the Substitute again, pitching the Ronin Toten. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go for a Swap Frog. Uh, we are going to use the Swap Frog here. We're going to send a copy of Substitute to the graveyard. Uh, we will uh, chain Substitute together a whole bunch of times now. Okay. Uh, we are going to send uh, the Beals, the Treeborn. Everyone's getting in the pond. Uh, the Flip Flop, the Flip Flop. And now I just have to decide if I want to go for the FTK or the control board. I think both are pretty good. Uh, both are going to require a pretty specific setup here. Okay, we're going to go for as many as we can. Okay. So, dupe frog, dupe frog. Yeah, I'm just going to I'm just going to have to top deck it. Uh, we will special swap frog. We'll okay. trigger the effect of the swap frog. We're going to send the poison draw. Okay. We'll trigger the effect of the poison draw. Okay. Probably like the only time you're ever going to see the swap frog effect send a monster on field to the graveyard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to bounce the swap frog. Okay. Uh, and then we are going to Moray of Greed. Your favorite card, buddy. This is what it's going to rely on. This is like on. the first one where it's actually good. Uh, the first deck, rather, uh, instead of a terrible okay. deck. We'll draw three here. Okay. And then we will... Uh, we will uh, do it again. We'll do it again, buddy. Okay, okay. All right, all right. We're not there yet. Not there yet. Okay. Deck is one card thinner now. Please. And there it is. Okay. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. still a little crusty. Um, I now have to hit you 20 times with a mass driver. So uh, to display for everyone at home, uh, you can banish any frog from the graveyard to summon back the Ronin Toten. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't include Substitute. Uh, for some... Because he's not a frog, reason. he's a toad. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> we can go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 26... 28. That's 28, 32. Yeah. Make sure you know how to do math 36, properly. 36. 30, what? That's 4,000, so we're halfway. 4,000, uh, 40, what is this? That's 44. 44. And I left some stuff in the deck for uh, substitute reasons. So if you want to take the 44, we can keep this uh, train wreck a, a rolling. Okay. We'll sure. Send swap frogs so it puts me to 36. For Unifrog, for Flip Flop Frog. For mm -hmm. Dupe Frog, for Unifrog, how much is this? You need nine more banishes total, or nine more tributes off Mass Drive. You've got two on field. So, so. Uh, we haven't sent that one yet. Right. We'll go one, two, three, four. Uh, that's uh, how much? 36 here? Or that's That'll be 16. 16. So, so I'll take so that. So I need five more? You need five so more. So as you can see, we are, we are a little low. Um, <laughs> we're not okay. all the way there yet. And that's why this deck is playing one copy of Fishborg Blaster, so that we can pitch cards from our hand uh, in order to go in a blaster, trigger that for another four, banish okay. Death Frog, summon back Ronin, trigger that for another four, trigger mm -hmm. Fishborg, send a True Nade, summon it back, that's another four, <laughs> and then the and then you just clean up the rest of the field. Do it. Wow. Okay. A cool. uh, little bit, little bit crusty, but you did manage to pull it off. And uh, my hand was not like particularly good anyway. I had some things I could have used to slow you down, but that's Frog FTK, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Let's go to game. That's two. game one of Frog FTK. Now it's gonna be a little. You know, buddy, that went pretty much exactly as I expected it to go. Uh, at least there was the illusion that I had a chance in the early stages of that game. But 
here we are, uh, game two. I think you're right, this is gonna be a lot different and we're gonna see if our sideboard can actually come in clutch here and uh, help us fend off the frog FTK threat. <laughs> you said the beginning of that game. You're referring to the first draw phase, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm referring to, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, for what it's worth, uh, not much matters more than that and uh, mine is not looking fantastic. Uh, I can empathize, buddy. Uh, crap, what are we gonna Okay, uh, well, good luck. I will go to main one. Now, one of the things that this deck is known for is that while a lot of people know this as the Mass Driver Frog FDK deck and the reason that honestly Mass Driver is banned in the game, a lot of people don't realize that this deck actually has more tricks up its sleeve that take advantage of the extra deck, and it can do things in other ways with the available synchro pool that we have. So the question is whether or not you actually are still on the FDK, and that's part of the mind game of this deck, which makes it a little bit fun. Right. So the opening uh, play is so absolutely linear and so countered by cards like DD Crow and Hanawada that people had to innovate. And that is what prevented this deck from being just everywhere at the start of the format. But this is a list synthesized from the one that won Worlds. And by that point, they knew what they were doing in games two and three. Yeah, for sure. So I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go ahead and honestly just set and pass. <laughs> I mean, that's not a terrible play if you're X-Saber. I mean, it's not ideal. I, I wish I had uh, some other colored cards in my hand that weren't orange, if I'm being honest with you. But. So you have effectively played around um, Armory Arm uh, Colossal Fighter OTK, which I assume you were expecting to see. Um, Basically, I had to do what I could. I'll go for hand destruction here in standby. We're going to send a Ronin Toten and a Draw Frog or Death Frog to the graveyard. Sure. Uh, I will send a Paschal... And this is actually a very tough call here. I think, however, I am going to send this full Helm Knight to the graveyard and we'll draw two. Sure. Uh, I'll go to main one. Now, unfortunately, you are way more likely to have drawn hand traps from this position. Uh, I'm going to normal summon substitute, if that's okay with you. There's the boy. Yep. And then I will card destruction. <sighs> Gross. Okay, well, I have to do this now or I'm gonna lose them. So I'm going to chain DD Crow, get mm -hmm. rid of the Ronin, and I'm also going to chain this Hanewada while I'm at it, just so I don't Ooh, die. Wow, okay. Um, that's gonna make this a lot more difficult unless I draw some pretty specific cards here. Uh, I'm gonna pitch three. My hand was pretty stacked. I had Summoner Monk, Fall Troll, Bogart Knight. Now you can see the little bit of the conundrum I was in. We'll draw three. This is really rough. Uh, I'm gonna go for hand destruction again. Sure. Uh, let's get rid of this Ember's Blade and this... I'm going to get rid of Book of Moon. It's a tough one. We'll draw two. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I don't I don't have it. Uh, we're going to go Substitute here, targeting itself. Sure. I'm going to grab... There's like a neat little line where I get an extra normal with Swap Frog, but it can only be used on right. frog monsters, and Substitute isn't a frog monster. <laughs> uh, we will get Swap Frog. Could you imagine being Konami R&D and just thinking, all right, we can't have these be frogs, so they can be toads <laughs> instead. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we're going to trigger Swap Frog here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we are going to send a Ronin Toten to the graveyard. All uh, good. I'm going to activate Ronin Toten, banishing Dust Frog. We are going to add Swap Frog back to the hand to trigger its okay. effect. And then we are going to Salvage, targeting Ooh. Substitute and Unifrog. Such a strong card in this deck. And this is good because this allows you to almost represent the combo next turn if you so wish. I do have it, so kill me here, buddy. Okay, we'll draw. Uh, we'll head on over to main one. My hand's not bad, but pitching those cards for card destruction really hurt at the same time. Okay, well, uh, thankfully, with your hand destruction and your card destruction, you got me into the rescue cat. Okay. So we're gonna sack that off. Uh, we're gonna go for double air bellum here. That's rough. Now, you do have the Ronin Toten, which makes this a little complicated, but fortunately, we have Dark Soul that was set. Sure. So we're going to sync these two off. Go for a Goyo Guardian here. Sure. Trigger the Dark Soul, which will happen in end phase. And I don't mind this. I can steal your Ronin Toten so you can't bring stuff back. You have one Toad gone, so 
unless you're playing a third, which I guess you could be potentially, then that's going to make things a little bit complicated for you. And I get to hit something out of your hand with air bellum. So I don't hate this. So we'll hit. And would you like it? I would, of course. <laughs> would I like it? Uh, I'll take, uh, you'll take 16 here and we'll hit something out of your hand. Please be the substitute. You've got to be fucking with me, dude. Ha! Let's go. Easiest hit of my life. Uh, I will go to end phase and we will trigger this Dark Soul. Uh, this Airbellum also goes to grave, but that's fine. Uh, with Dark Soul, I will grab... Would have really liked Fall Troll if the Airbellum stuck around. I suppose I'll grab this Bogart Knight. He seems pretty okay. And we'll throw it over to you. Okay, stand by main. We've got a game. Mm, I don't know if we do. Uh, I'm going to normal summon Swap Frog here. Sure. Uh, we're going to use the effect. I'm going to send a Treeborn to the grave. Okay. Uh, I'll activate the Swap Frog's effect. I will pass turn. Ooh, okay. The deck's only got go two Ronin Toten in it is the big problem, and they are right. both accounted for. Uh, so we'll go ahead then, and I think, can we clean this up? Oh, we are so close. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I'm going to bring out the Bogart Knight that you know about. Yep. I'm going to trigger the effect. I'm going to run out and an air bellum. Sure. This, thanks to your Ronin Toten, is exactly lethal <laughs> if this connects. Absolutely not. Really? This is 6,400. 35 plus 28 is 63 Holy plus the 100 is shit. 64. <laughs> yup, you got it. <laughs> Unless you have Gores. Oh, okay. Good, 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 good. <laughs>
Uh, we're going to go Substitute pitching the flip-flop. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to grab a Unifrog. Is that okay? Sure. I will activate Ronin in Grave, banishing flip-flop. All good. And I will Substitute popping the Ronin. You're going to grab yep. another Unifrog and then proceed to combat. And we'll go Uni in. Yep, that seems pretty good. So I'm going to take, what, four here? I'll grab this one. It was the Mystical Space Typhoon. And we'll go in again. And I'll take it. And that was a Gotham's Emergency Call. Sick. A uh, thousand direct, a hundred direct. Take the 11. Uh, second main, I have Mass Driver. So let's see the Hanawata or you're dead. Oh, uh, I had a crow, but there was like no good opportunity uh. to fire it because you had double Ronin. That's right. one of the issues with this card is that it only works situationally if you're like stuck on one Ronin. Like you need double crow for this to be like any bit good. Yep. Uh, I guess it's like okay in situations where you're like hand destruction and card destruction and trying to dig and I just need to pitch a card to just stop the Ronin. But yeah, we just couldn't get there. I mean, the other, you know, the other card was uh, an Air Bellum and then yeah, the set the was just a set. Paschal, which was just literally doing nothing in my hand. But, oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. That was a, got it, buddy. That was a close one. That You know what? I have come around on Moray of Greed. The opening <laughs> After hand, all this time. <laughs> the opening hand was Driver, and I, I was like, I drew the Driver. I'm so goddamn dead. It was Driver, Double Ronin, Death Frog, Flip Flop. And I was like, oh, this game's already over. I see. <laughs> uh, draw for turn, Poison Draw. And I was oh, like, perfect. I'm like, I can cycle it. No, you can't because Poison Draw doesn't cycle unless it's already face up. This card is so restricted Atrocious. that way. But I guess, you know, old Yu-Gi-Oh not wanting you to draw cards. Not really too much of a shocker there. But uh, I've got a newfound respect for Unifrog. I'm not going to yeah. lie. This card put in work. Yeah. And uh, if it wasn't for it, I mean, I could have MST the Mass Driver at the very least. But damn, uh, very, very strong card. I've My got bad hand news. was... <laughs> oh, my God. You know, to be fair, you should have just done it and let me MST it because I think this would have been way funnier. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's still pretty funny seeing it now. Yeah. Uh, my opener was Pashul, this crow, and then I think it was, I think it was these five actually. That's not terrible. Those are pretty good. Uh, it's like fine if I can get the game to go long enough. This is definitely uh, is a issue. Unifrog won this game type of scenario. Um, yeah. No. Um, sure. I was I was watching, of course, a significant amount of Frog FT game gameplay, and I was really struck by how frequently in games two and three, uh, the game would not be decided by the FTK. And I boarded into Mass Driver for game three just because I was like, well, I'm going first. You know, it is an FTK. I do want to, you know, make it happen. Yeah. Uh, but even the driver, I don't think is is really necessary here, um, because uh, as people would say, when you get to this position. Uh, if you can cycle into a board of like, let's say, uh, Substitoad, uh, Dupe Frog, uh, Dupe Frog, Uni Frog, and uh, a Flip Flop Frog, uh, this is functionally an FTK as well. Uh, just with knowledge right. of the card pool, there's really not that get uh, a lot that gets through this. You have the Dupe Lock, uh, you've got Flip Flop non-targeting, banishing four cards, or uh, bouncing four cards when it flips up. You've got Uni to contest Crazy. like any macro that your opponent might have boarded into or any back row that they set. And even if you get something large enough to get rid of the Dupe Frog and remove one of them, Substitute prevents your Dupe Frogs from being destroyed by battle. So there's just like almost nothing <laughs> outside of like three cards specific cards combos that beat a board like this. Uh, one of the most interesting things I heard said about this deck, and I think it was Joji Orlando who said this, was um, not only is this the best combo deck in the format, leagues more uh, competent than something like Infernity, it's also the best control deck in the format. You saw in those games, uh, even if I brick on frogs, they've all got big asses. Some of them, like Unifrog, do have really powerful effects, and like Flip Flop Frog, you can sit behind a Dupe Frog or a Flip Flop for a turn or two if you don't have it, and... Sure. Something like 30% of the game is draw spells, so, you know, it's not too hard to find it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I was thinking with this Gotham's emergency call that if you have card destruction or hand destruction yep. again, that was actually going to be very good for me, and that would allow me to start getting a bit more aggressive, because then I could just flip it up, get my guys back on the field, and actually start punching in with some things. But the opportunity never came up, and you were able to unbrick yourself with uh, the one draw yeah. spell you have that doesn't make both of us discard cards before we draw uh, in Moray of Greed. But, you know... It 
it's and and like this is like the thing with gold star too i cited one of these out but i figure like oh okay like i mean this card's fine but i didn't have enough cards to side in i think i ended up boarding in eight cards in total i brought in a second dd crow this deck was maining one uh the two hanewada mm -hmm. which you saw in game two i actually had a second one in hand if you happen to somehow get the <laughs> fdk going and then I boarded into Dust Tornadoes for your Mass Driver, which again is a bit iffy because if you don't keep it in in game two or three, then it's kind of a dead card because you're not really playing back row in this deck. Right. And then uh, the other card, which I could have severely punished you for had I had it over the Gotham's or the MST or the Book of Moon was uh, Crevice in the Different Dimension. That's, that's because the card there was I was a point. scared of above all others on yep. this Unifrog turn. I was like, if he had, I, I, at some point, I was just like, if he has it, he has it. Like, if, if I get my Ronin Spanished here, I do lose. But realistically, what else am I going to do? Right, exactly. Because Crevice could have taken both of these out. You'd have no way to get enough frogs for the Mass Driver. And then, I mean, basically, we'd be safe and secure from that point. Although, obviously, you still have shenanigans with the Substitute being able to do the armory arm colossal fighter shenanigans i'm sad we didn't get to see that out of you uh but the opportunity never really presented itself for you to do that but i just think it's so sick that this deck although it is just an ftk it has this backup line that is like one of the like most consistent ways to otk from around this time just using colossal fighter armory arm and that's just fantastic it's, it's more of just a one-trick pony in that regard right. and I, I think that's what I've, I've learned to appreciate about just seeing this deck pretty the, cool um, pretty cool the thing that i love is of course it's got the ftk line that everyone knows uh, it's got the armory arm line and it's more available than it would be for other decks because you can make two armory arm very easily uh whereas yes. other decks can only make the one so you can present the otk uh into pretty much any monster um usually your opponent has to have a monster with 1900 attack or more so that it trades with the colossal fighter uh right. here you can do it into like a gadget you can do it into like a, a machina for or like a machina anything right um yeah but yep. uh, outside of those two ways to win the game, it also has this super comprehensive like control strategy. And um, uh, oftentimes you would get people overboarding to beat stuff like the Mass Driver open with stuff like Hanawada. And then you'd go, all right, sweet, like nice Hanawada that you had to discard early because I threatened card destruction. Uh, now we're just going to play the control game. Uh, I'm going to pass to you. You can't out this board. I'll go for it again next turn. One fun little thing that uh, presented itself as a result of like the boarding process is cards like Dust Tornado. Like, what do you do? Do you imagine your opponent is not going to board out of the Mass Driver? You're going to get right. a turn though. And then you're going to be able to pop their Mass Driver before they go to battle phase and potentially clear it with Unifrog. It's just like all these cards that are so innocuous on their own, and so many of them were already printed, are just ruined by the Ronin Toten Substitute interaction. And absolutely, I mean that you end up with something like this. And then even with Unifrog as well, the fact that Unifrog can clear back row prior to you going into the FTK as well is just so strong because typically those are a lot of the cards you're going to be boarding into. But I think the larger issue is, especially for the X Saber deck, I can't say this about other strategies because I wasn't playing those matchups here, but with X Saber, you're siding out all the cards that are just dead in the matchup, and they're typically in your spell and trap department. Mm -hmm. Cards like your, you know, your Starlight Road and your like trap stun and just random crap like that. And you're putting in cards that are good, but you're not getting more cards that are going to necessarily help kill the frog FDK player. It's right. more cards to help you not die. And so a position as a result never of that, be. exactly. I mean, you know, cards like Crevice in the different dimension and the like are strong and good, but you still need a way to actually get your opponent's life points down to zero and so therefore that was the bit of the issue i ran into with this hand where it's like there just wasn't any pressure yeah. i had ways to potentially stop you uh you know sans unifrog just completely ripping my board to shreds but aside from that you know I, I just, Paschal and Arabellum is not exactly going to do it. It's unfortunate because, I mean, we've seen three consecutive games of X-Saber now. I imagine the fans are sick of it. This is the last time we see X-Saber. Yep. Um, X-Saber yep. tops a little bit in mid-2011, but I'll be honest with you, with the exception of exactly Billy Break, it's Coat. The, the deck was <laughs> so unbelievably powerful during this format, so dominant for so long, and then people figured out Frog FTK around the time of Worlds, and then it dropped off the face of the earth. And and we have really not seen it return since. They lose Cat. 
Uh, the Gold Sark line goes down in the process, as does the um, uh, Summoner Monk line. And uh, without that explosivity, it just gets run over by new strategies. Um, and I'm glad we got to sort of see that happen in real time as yeah. what people expected to be explosive strategies in Infernity ran over it, uh, or uh, failed to run over it, rather, um, as it uh, cleaned the clock of some of the more consistent strategies in the format. And then as it uh, became sort of a relic of a past where Yu-Gi-Oh! wasn't played at 50,000 miles an hour <laughs> here in this game. Uh, I, I will certainly miss uh, Arabellum and uh, Pashul, but, you know, I will also not miss Emergency Call at all. I don't think we ever resolved this correctly no. one time. <laughs> I don't think so either, yeah, and the fans made that very clear. But, you oh, know, it we read the, the comments! <laughs> But the last thing I will say before we wrap it up is the one advantage that X-Saber does have against a lot of the other decks in the format against the FDK specifically yep. is that it can dish out the damage, right? Some of the other decks just around this time aren't able to play let's get to 8,000 in a turn or two. Imagine Nark against this. I exactly. Mean, I was thinking that from the last episode we did. Like, Frogmon, I would be sitting here just like, okay, let's hit you for 24 in three turns. I'll kill you if, I, if that ever happened. That oh, would be the God. biggest pipe dream. So it can dish out so much damage so quickly between mm -hmm. fall troll between i mean even emergency call is actually pretty live with you with hand destruction and card destruction and right. stuff as well you've got rescue cat i mean there's just so many ways to just swarm with fall troll i mean it just gets nuts and so that's the kind of deck you need and that's why the deck was so dominant so mm -hmm. i'm glad we gave the deck you know it's fair showing because uh it, it represented a pretty fair part of Yu-Gi-Oh's history uh for the better part of a year i would say and so well obviously you know we have to move on uh i think it was it was a it was a good time to be able to see this deck in action for sure i disliked this deck just because i find the air bellum setup particularly frustrating uh i don't like the ease of access with which they have extremely unfair cards like Gotham's. and in this format in general it frustrates me how common things like dd crow are a card that i oh it's it's just such a blowout <laughs> in this format um and it it, it is so counterintuitive to me to think that the best deck in the format can use hand destruction four times in one turn uh, to find its combo and theoretically draw the opponent into like four DD Crow as well uh, and still win. It's it's so strange. Um, from yeah. this position, Yu-Gi-Oh gets a lot more like the deck on my side of the field than the deck on your side of the field. Uh, coming up, we have Plant Synchro, for instance. Uh, we have Grave Keepers, which you can, of course, yep. share if you play. And uh, I think we are likely <laughs> to see some Yu-Gi-Oh! that is just about as interactive as what you are seeing here for the next little bit as well. Plant, plant format is actually revered as another one of like Yu-Gi-Oh's best formats. And it's almost like a harken back to Edison format in a way where there's a lot of diversity amongst the decks that are playable during that time. Oh. And so you and I were looking That's as we were getting Tengu to that point. plant format, yeah, but I mean, not yeah, the yeah, one yeah. we're about to play. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about a little bit even further beyond. Yeah. Just to give, Joseph, I'm trying to give the audience hope, okay? We just played Stop an FTK. Watching. Our <laughs> Turn off the video. No, no, no. Okay, stay, stay. It's going to be good. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Unfortunately, I'll be back in the Shirt of Shame next week, but we'll get back. You we'll get Joseph back. You functionally volunteered it's... for the Shirt of Shame <laughs> in this one. I, basically, but there was hope. There was hope for a brief moment, and then it quickly dwindled away. But we have to shout the patrons, as always. So big shouts to Shout1317, Moto Cameron, Smith, Chaotic Meatball, SJ Winchester, Tim Zero X3, Ika Iron Fang, Part 2, Pony Starkey, and Musa, Michael Dente, Dan the Man, Hoban, Sinker Guy, Ole, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wild, Straconic, Rock Slide, Dolly Wop, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Cole T, Tom Thomas Delsum, Yusuf Asin 05, Jordan Coons, Kelvin, Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, True Nerdgasm, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Lumpy, Nehru Celeste, David Lee, Rockway 325, Lane Rogers, Chat God, Silent Agent 216, I side in Grand Maju and Salad, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Brett Harvey, John Two Based, Apathy Astro, Brody Eastwood, Day Sear, Elias Panero, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Give Me Speedroid or Give Me Death, Matthew Elliott, MBT's Hard Leg, Ashlyn Jensen, Cypher P on Perp 6, TC Gaming, Matthew Brady, Edison Format, Ash Blossom, Toast Sniffer, Dr. Solace, Max, Tom Russell, Gage Just Play play Watts already. Joseph, is that like your <laughs> alt or something? Yeah, that's a, uh, that's an Chipotle, alt. <laughs> Chipotle Rice. I actually like that one. Uh, and Nicholas Garland. Thank you so much for watching the video and we will see you next time.